All right, good afternoon. Um, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, today's speaker is going to be Kevin Thompson from the National Science Foundation. And he is gonna be talking uh, a little bit about the Campus Cyber Infrastructure Program. And for those of you that were in Minneapolis last week, I think that this will mirror a lot of the discussions that uh, were occurring there. And Kevin will go into probably a little bit more detail than he did with, uh, than he did with his uh, presentation there. So I will turn it over to you, Kevin. Thanks, Jason. Can you hear me okay? Yep, sounds good. Okay, great. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm uh, a program officer in um, the Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure at NSF. And uh, I'm going to uh, walk you through um, a little bit of intro material if you're not familiar with NSF and then spend really the rest of the time talking about um, this eight-year-old program uh, that we now abbreviate as CC Star for Campus uh, Cyber Infrastructure. If I can move the slides, okay, here we go. Um, so uh, NSF has a, a rather uh, straightforward mission to promote the progress of science to advance the national health, prosperity, and welfare. And then there's a piece that uh, people often forget, even I forget uh, that third piece to secure the national defense. Um, we are not the only federally funded uh, source for uh, uh, funding in, in basic academic research, but in some fields uh, we are relied upon very heavily. Um, while this is data from fiscal year 2015, um, the newer numbers are pretty close to this. They haven't changed uh, too much. And so the directorate I'm in, which is the computer Sciences Directorate is dependent upon um, uh, in a big way for uh, federal funding for computer science research. So what do we mean by cyber infrastructure? What is this office? Well, we are one of four divisions in the Computer Sciences Directorate. Uh, the other three are, uh, you could really view them as basic research uh, divisions. And our, our role is a little different, um, and it's NSF-wide in um, trying to transform science and engineering research through the um, funding of the provisioning, development, deployment, and operation of research cyber infrastructure and um, research into the cyber infrastructure. So here are some numbers um, from FY18. Um, I think the numbers, uh, I know that the research budget for our division was very close to that number in FY19, uh, around 222 million. Um, and we got into our division close to 1,000 proposals. We had a, a larger than average uh, success rate uh, for OAC that's um, somewhat explained by the fact that we do have um, some programs that are rather narrowly scoped and um, they make awards um, out of um, not as, as large a, a set of proposals that might come into say a basic research program. So when we talk about cyber infrastructure, we mean a lot of things in that term. Um, and here's kind of the laundry list of what could be viewed as components of cyber infrastructure. Uh, clearly, you know, this program has really been focusing on um, the uh, networking uh, components, but um, as you'll see, it's also now has reached into the people, organization, communities, and the computing resources. Um, in OAC, we have a number of programs, and I urge you to uh, look into those um, online on our website. Uh, we have um, some programs that are very closely aligned with these specific components. Um, and we have some other programs that um, kind of cover um, maybe multiple aspects of this. CC Star is in a way an example of that. <clears throat> so uh, to set the stage for the, for the CC Star program, at NSF we, you know, we, we view, uh, we really view this in terms of kind of a number of layers of the networking fabric. Uh, supporting uh, scientific research and education uh, that spans global, national, state, and regional. 
and campus. And uh, in a way, CC Star is, is making the premise that all are needed for end-to-end -end high performance uh, connectivity to uh, drive scientific discovery in the 21st century. And so from kind of a global view, there's this wonderful, rich, global r and &E network fabric. Um, NSF plays a small role in uh, funding some of the infrastructure that you see on this slide. Um, that could be uh, a separate talk. In fact, I think you're hearing from one of the um, awardees in uh, a couple of weeks. I think Hieronimo might be talking about their Amlite a project or at least a piece of it um, on this brown bag series in a couple of weeks from now. Um, NSF does not directly fund Internet 2, as probably most of you on the call know, that's member driven and member funded. Um, as an aside, we do have a cool project um, that we're supporting Internet 2 with on, um, it's called ECAS and it's um, a cloud uh, computing um, kind of pilot project uh, um, addressing both innovation and uh, performance speed ups on applying uh, cloud computing services to across a range of scientific applications. But there's uh, the Internet 2 backbone, uh, somewhat outdated, uh, actually, I think that's about right still, but they're, as you know, they're working on a new one. Um, and then here's a, a map that um, isn't often shown, um, but was certainly visible um, last week at the Quilt meeting. And this is a layer uh, showing you the state and regional optical networks um, in its own right, uh, rather rich uh, fabric. And so that brings us down to the campus level. And with this program, this was really a program that started um, in response to one of the task force reports out of uh, the advisory committee for cyber infrastructure. They ended up um, putting out a set of reports um, early 2011. And one of them uh, where you see the authors listed at the bottom there um, was a task force on campus bridging. And um, if you read it, there's actually quite a lot of text that speaks to a campus networking program. Um, the third strategic recommendation uh, speaks pretty directly to it. And so we uh, took that uh, to heart and we uh, began this program um, called CC Star. And um, you know, it, it really is, is based on the belief that networking is a fundamental layer and underpinning of cyber infrastructure. Uh, the investments are driven by um, scientific R&E needs. Um, in general, most of the awards have, gen have generally gone towards campus networking upgrades over the years. Um, and at the heart of that is the diagram on the lower right, which I think most of you know quite well, the classic ESNet uh, conceptual science DMZ. Um, the, the normative award in the program has been a 10 or 100 gigabit per second upgrade externally that um, eventually gets to internet two. Uh, and then in combination with that, a re-architecting of the campus border along either the, the classic concept of a science DMZ, or there have been some creative interpretations of that over the years have been, I think, quite effective as well. Um, it's uh, for our division, a really big program in terms of the number of awards um, over the eight, eight years in existence. Um, so we're pushing closer to 300 awards now, I think, in the history of the program. Um, there you see uh, kind of a one-year-old uh, snapshot of where a lot of the awards have gone. Some of the awards are hidden on that map because some institutions have gotten more than one award in this program. There are different areas in the program to which you can uh, submit. And um, as you'll see in one of the main uh, criteria for CC Star, um, you know, one could drill, you, one could really kind of drill down this program into um, incentivizing uh, new and increased campus level partnerships between the researchers and campus IT leadership. 
So uh, here are some numbers uh, just from 2019 in terms of updating where the awards have gone in the program. Um, I think we made close to 30 awards in 2019. Um, and there you see the breakout um, in the parens. And we had uh, five areas. I'm going to walk you through um, all of those areas. And I'm going to uh, show you some example awards. So this is how it was laid out in um, 2019. Um, the program does often change a little bit in text and areas year over year. Keep that in mind. Uh, these numbers were, uh, were from the solicitation where we expected to fund 10 to 17 million in award funding. I think we're in the upper, upper range of that, of that range for 2019. Area one um, has largely remained unchanged over the years, and I've got slides on each of these areas. Um, in fact, I'll just start going through those right now. Um, and then there's the status from, right, from 2019 where the big changes were, um, we had taken a hiatus from the cyber team area, um, and then we reconstituted a compute area that looked very different from uh, the previous single attempt at funding um, campus level computing in this, uh, in, in this solicitation from several years ago. Uh, this was kind of, well, this was completely rethought and we got a very healthy response in that area. Um, and then um, as I said last week in the PI meeting, and as I'll say again at the end of this talk, uh, I think there's a good chance we'll have another solicitation out by the end of the calendar year. These are the program-wide criteria for CC STAR. Uh, they have largely been unchanged in the history of the program. Um, the key to being funded in the program is that you have to present compelling science drivers um, and, and make a convincing case uh, through those science drivers as to needing the, the funding for whatever the proposed upgrades are um, or activities that you're proposing. Another main criteria, as I said before, is this partnership among the researchers and campus IT leadership. You'll see that on some of the slides showing um, just sampling through some of the few, some of the new awards. And then there's this cyber infrastructure plan that I think has been in place since the first year as a requirement. And this is meant to be a forcing function for a campus to think strategically in kind of the larger context beyond what they're proposing um, in a single CC star proposal for say a campus network upgrade. How does that fit in to your larger strategic planning uh, for cyber infrastructure for the campus? And um, I think just going through this exercise, you know, we, we would like to think at NSF has been a benefit uh, for campuses across the country in, in thinking through that. <clears throat> so also where relevant, um, we expect proposals to address appropriate cybersecurity issues and challenges. Uh, we also view these activities as ongoing uh, chances for um, student engagement. Okay, so area one, which has really been uh, kind of the core area of the program from day one, um, and again, mostly unchanged in its text, continued to offer uh, funding for network infrastructure improvements at the campus level. Uh, the solicitation lays out um, some straightforward examples of that that can, in, in addition to the two I already mentioned, can also include upgrades among buildings on campus. Um, we have um, tuned the requirements in area one that we want to see in the proposal a little bit over time. And the summary table quantifying the science, science drivers is especially important. Um, also, uh, where we have, I think, used words such as encouraging, we may at some point require a network topology diagram showing all proposed upgrades. Um, I can't recall if it's required now or not. It should be, frankly. Um, and I know we require equipment quotes. So we want to see a complete uh, design, a design and solution laid out. And it's interesting, um, if, if you're on this call and you're looking at this and you have not proposed before, if you've, if you've gotten an award before in this area, you, 
we don't want to see another proposal from you back in this area, back from your institution. Um, but if you've never gotten an award in this area and you're thinking about it, um, uh, just be aware that you know when we panel proposals, um, you can assume that we will have people in the room that um, actually know the details of the equipment being proposed and can assess it as to whether it is appropriate for um, the science flows and the paths that you're describing in the proposal uh, with respect to uh, things like um, buffer size and so forth. Okay, area two. Um, this has changed quite a bit over the years. Uh, and um, this past year uh, was, uh, I think, a little tight, more tightly focused on um, specifically targeting groups of smaller under-resourced institutions um, and expecting proposals to be uh, led by either a state, a regional optical network, or a leadership institution in a region. Uh, this um, area one, by the way, was up to 500,000 um, for two years. Area two, this past year, is up to 800,000 total for two years. And um, an important note um, here at the bottom of the slide, um, you know, it's, it's so this is an area where um, historically we've gotten new awardees in. And so you can find this text um, on this URL off of an NSF uh, website um, off of our um, budget and finance um, area of NSF. And I put this in here simply to convey that um, if you're a new institution or if, if you've had an award before but you've never reached uh, a, a significant threshold in funding, uh, which I believe may be 700,000 total. I can't remember the, the number exactly, but there are, there are multiple types of financial reviews. And just be aware that um, NSF, uh, that part of NSF will um, go through um, a financial review uh, prior to an award uh, if you're in that category. Area three is uh, where we open things up and um, allow for applied network research to infuse into the program and allow for some applied network research to be uh, experimentally leveraged at the campus level. And so this is in partnership with our network research division, uh, CNS. In fact, they um, on some years, 100% fund everything that comes out of this program area. Um, and again, it's what we expect to see in proposals in this area, something, something new, right? So that could be um, a, a new uh, product as a result of integrating existing components to create maybe a new platform, a new system. Uh, it, can, it can be developing uh, something um, on top of an existing uh, platform, that something has to be kind of new and novel uh, for it to be considered for funding in this area. Um, and, um, and so, uh, as a result, we would not expect to see, um, and these are proposals that can go up to a million dollars, we would not expect to see the budget um, dominated by equipment uh, purchases because of the applied R&D uh, thematic in this area. Area four was really, uh, really brand new in, in 2019, and it was kind of written in an overly complex way, I'll, I'll admit, I guess this is recorded, I shouldn't have said that, but um, we, we laid out actually kind of three attack vectors into this area, um, and this is about funding a shared um, compute resource at the campus level. And we gave you kind of three, three ways to go about it. Uh, the first one was a straightforward campus cluster resource in, in either seeding for, say, a, a, a small under-resourced institution that may have nothing to start out with or augmenting existing resources at the campus level. And then the other two kind of worked off of that. B was cloud computing resources where you could ask for um, up to, I believe it was $100,000 in cloud credits from um, one of several um, cloud services that we partnered with for that. 
And then C was a hybrid. You could actually go for both. So you could ask for up to $400,000 uh, to purchase a cluster. And then you could add into that um, on the back of the proposal, um, not part of the budget. You could uh, price out, I think, up to $100,000 in cloud credits. Um, it was expected that campus-wide computing needs would be addressed. And um, we discouraged um, proposals that was, were keying on um, a single application or use. Um, we uh, stated that we would prefer um, to fund under-resourced institutions, and that would be the preference. We actually got a wide array of um, institution types uh, proposing in and getting awards. And um, we added this interesting, uh, thread that you won't see in NSF's MRI program, I don't believe, which is we required um, the proposal to commit to sharing at least 20% of the compute cycles external to the campus and to identify the shared distributed compute fabric. And the solicitation listed an example shared compute fabric, but um, left the door open to uh, propose your favorite and then I think went on to say that you know the the usage and adoption um, and penetration of that fabric would would be part of the how the proposal would be reviewed <clears throat> and then we um, I think consistent with uh, the theme of CC star um, asked proposals to show us how this cluster was going to be uh, connected both for um, intercampus and um, uh, external to campus users Area five, we brought back from, I think it was a couple of years ago, Cyber Team, uh, Research and Education CI-based regional facilitation. And um, this program really, this program area in a way is an evolution from some years back in CC Star, um, supporting this concept of a CI engineer, which if I recall correctly, the first year we offered that was really focused on network engineering. And you know now <clears throat> the version of this is is different, right? It's it's not targeting a single institution. Um, we're looking at invest investing seeding, if you will, um, teams of these um, CI facilitation experts that can um, uh, cross a range of expertise and uh, be in a position to engage very effectively with scientists and research projects and help them really um, on board and get get on an, uh, a, a different kind of vector in uh, better leveraging of uh, CI on campus and external to campus and um, and we made some awards in this area uh, those were um, up to 1.4 million I believe over three years so these were the biggest awards in the program for 2019 uh, and we made a small handful of those. And now I'll show you what hopefully is the complete list. I will apologize if I miss somebody and if you're on here and I missed you, send me an email so I can correct it, but I think I got them all. Uh, these are all the area, the area one awardees um, from 2019. And um, it's really easy if you're specifically interested in one of these awards that I show on these tables. Um, you can just Google, uh, often just you can Google NSF space number and the award number and it, and, you know, um, you'll, you're probably one click away from getting access to the award abstract. And that's what NSF makes available on its webpage or the award abstracts. We don't make the uh, proposal text available, but um, I think you can get a lot of good info out of reading um, some of these abstracts. In this program, the PI is probably the one who, who wrote the abstract herself and uh, maybe with a few edits from NSF. Uh, so here's the list for area one. Um, and um, here's area two. These were uh, the, the region uh, awards. And um, uh, the, the second from the bottom, uh, Marla Mills uh, award, that was um, actually more of a planning grant. Um, and the one to, to learn came in um, very close to the end of the fiscal year. 
Um, so we made five awards in, in that area and you can see the award sizes. Um, and we heard from most of these awardees last week at um, the CC Star PI meter. We certainly heard from a lot of them. Um, here are the integration and innovation awards and you see these go up to close to a million. And this is kind of interesting, two of the three um, have a lot to do with network security. Here, actually, I think all three, actually, I, I think um, uh, Barr would, would probably object to um, uh, my implication that our UNET does not address cybersecurity, but it's front and center, uh, I think, certainly in the other two awards, uh, which uh, is kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> and then we made uh, quite a number of, of awards in the compute category. Uh, and here's a list of those awardees that should number 12, um, if I'm not mistaken. And those again went up to 400,000. The interesting thing about this award set is um, most of these are cluster only. So um, no, uh, no awards were made in um, the cloud only option and only uh, a handful of these um, uh, went the hybrid approach and included um, some um, cloud credits uh, from Google or Amazon um, as part of their award. Uh, Jason, just a sound check. Are, are you hearing me okay? Yep, still loud and clear. Okay, cool. Um, and then here are the Area 5 awardees. Um, up to 1.4. I have asterisks next to these. If, if you go in and, um, or at least this was true before we, um, I think might have done an increment across all three, but um, those are the correct total awards. Um, the number, the award size may not look that way um, on the NSF award page. It may be lower and that's simply because we're funding those across uh, more than one fiscal year. And we'll show the, the current fiscal year funding um, for a new award only. Um, so those are the three there. Okay, now, um, I'm sure there are some number of awardees on this call that <laughs> their award was just shown in one of those tables. Um, I just did some random, I just took a few random awards just to show as a sampling. So. Uh, my apologies if I didn't choose yours. Chances are I didn't. Um, but um, these are all, um, actually this content you can also find online if you manage to find the um, CC Star Workshop agenda page. Um, the, all of these um, little quad charts are actually linked to um, uh, the roster uh, page and the names on the roster. So you can, you can find this material, you can also find talks on a lot of these projects that were given from last week. But here I'm just going to show you kind of two page summaries that they provided on their awards, one or two for each program area. And here for area one, uh, we made uh, an award uh, to Claflin uh, University, uh, which is a uh, historically black university in Orangeburg, uh, South Carolina, I believe. And you know this is a good example for those who are not familiar with the program. Uh, this is kind of a classic, I think organizational structure for a PI team for an awardee in this space. It's, it's not always, although I think in these examples, I might show a lot of the, most of these awards might be similar to the position that Mr. Bren holds as an associate VP for IT, so campus IT leader as the PI. It can also be a domain scientist. In fact, I think the ones I show for area four, I think they're both physicists. And then you see, you know, as co-PIs, you see clear participation from some of the domain scientists that um, are going to uh, be impacted um, by the proposed activities. And um, in, in Claflin's case, um, their, their award will help them establish for the first time a, a science DMZ on their border. I believe it also upgrades their connectivity from one to 10 gigabits per second through Clemson to internet too. And I think it um, greatly increases their intracampus connectivity across a couple of their um, science, uh, research, and education uh, buildings. <clears throat> and here's another example from um, Area One. 
uh, that uh, went to uh, the PI of Cheryl Reinhardt, Director of IT Infrastructure at Duquesne. And um, there you see her uh, co-PIs that um, she had on the cover page. And here's her um, one slide summary, kind of an interesting, not 100, but 120 gigabits per second um, kind of science DMZ enabled um, upgrade to the science buildings um, at Duquesne. Uh, so that is uh, another uh, science DMZ uh, kind of centric um, award uh, with uh, network upgrade. And a Globus DTN as well. Uh, so I picked this one out for area two. Uh, the project title was Sun Corridor Network, Arizona Community College Research Expansion. This is interesting because the proposal came from and it was awarded to Northern Arizona University. So this is all about leveraging um, the Sun Corridor Network um, in the Southwest to connect uh, you see Steve Burrell there, uh, VP of uh, IT and CIO at Northern Arizona, um, with uh, partners um, across Arizona State and Sun Corridor Network, and I think University of Arizona is part of this. And um, this is to connect um, a set of community colleges, most of which are in the Phoenix Scottsdale uh, area, and this is leveraging uh, the Sun Corridor uh, Network, uh, their, their regional optical network. Um, and so this was in a very effective way uh, to, uh, to propose into Area 2, uh, and, and they, they did this via um, an NSF institution, uh, which is uh, perfectly appropriate, and, um, and that will uh, accomplish uh, what, the, uh, what the area set out to uh, provide for a funding opportunity. Um, and then... Let's see, so here's, area, here's an example from uh, the set of awards in the integration and innovation area. One of those awards that I showed in the table went to um, Eric Boyd, University of Michigan, with his um, partner, Sean McKee. And this is kind of a cool project. It's um, all about uh, doing a, a Zeek-based um, programmable IDS um, at scale uh, and scaling this up to four by 100. Uh, at the University of Michigan, and feeding back that um, uh, that work uh, and contributing it back into the um, open source uh, Zeek uh, project, as well as influencing, not surprisingly, the the commercial spinoff of Zeek, Core Light, and uh, that is uh, work in combination uh, with their Corsa uh, gear. Okay, area four, I think I have a couple of examples from area four. Um, and here's a domain scientist uh, as a PI, um, Dr. Kevin Lannon. Uh, here, this one's from Notre Dame. And there you see uh, Dr. Lannon's co-PI set. Um, and this was targeting um, uh, machine learning compute resources um, at Notre Dame. I believe they included, they were one uh, the, of the awardees that did include um, AWS credits. So you see that icon in there. Um, and it's hard, it's a little hard to read in this scrunched um, slide, but um, I think they're hanging their proposed um, campus compute cluster, this new cluster that's all about enabling machine learning um, via, I think, three different types of NVIDIA cards if memory serves. And I think they're hanging this right off the of Science DMZ um, that I believe might have been funded under a previous CC Star Award. Um, and um, they are, um, they're utilizing Open Science Grid for their shared fabric. In fact, I think all 12 awardees chose Open Science Grid as their shared compute fabric. Um, and the OSG folks gave a great, um, one day uh, session, I think on Monday, um, on um, an overview of OSG and some um, connectivity options and uh, so forth. Um, so this is um, not entirely GPU based. I think there's some CPUs in here, but uh, clearly the theme here is um, uh, uh, addressing the machine learning needs at Notre Dame uh, via a GPU cl uh, centric cluster. And then here's another one that um, went to Wayne State. Um, 
the other physics professor here, David Sinabro is the PI. And um, I think this one is also hanging off of their science DMZ at their data center. Um, this is, has a little different makeup. And interestingly enough, even though I, I don't recall that machine learning was a, a driver for them, um, things like their molecular dynamic simulations, um, they're seeing like 100 times speed up putting these on um, GPUs. And so not surprisingly, that drove um, uh, among their kind of mixed uh, solution um, a lot of uh, GPUs um, in their proposed um, campus resource as well. Um, I forgot to mention, I mentioned this about the networking equipment in area one and area two. Um, it, if this area gets repeated, bear in mind that um, there's a good chance NSF will have in the room for the review panel uh, people who um, are, um, have backgrounds in campus computing and, um, and have knowledge down to the specific um, choices of um, compute node hardware and balances with um, uh, memory and uh, storage and so forth. And so that's, that's part of the um, evaluation is um, seeing how this ties into the science drivers that are presented and how those science drivers are presented in, in the case of area four, uh, computational resource needs. Okay, and um, Area five, those were the, again, uh, up to 1.4 million. And I think I showed, do I show two of the three here? I might show two of the three. So here's the one that went to uh, a Great Plains network, but, but in reality, I think this was um, to uh, University of Missouri. Uh, that was the awardee institution. Uh, but you can view this functionally as, as a Great Plains network um, regional cyber team. And so they've got this um, interesting model of aligning mentors uh, with men mentees, uh, if that's a term. <laughs> and um, uh, two of the mentor leadership institutions that have experience in the space, I think include University of Oklahoma and University of Nebraska. Actually, the, the main players here are listed on this, on this slide. And I think uh, they're going to work this model out, uh, teaming especially with the University of South Dakota and South Dakota State, and then apply that um, kind of uh, teaming uh, that pairing of regional mentors with mentees and students, uh, then drive that down to uh, some smaller and under-resourced institutions um, across the GPN uh, region. And if I got something wrong there on the other one, some, uh, feel free to correct me when I'm, I'm done talking here. Um, and then I think this is my last example. Uh, uh, Drew spoke passionately about his um, award last week, uh, which is called Sweeter. Uh, this actually spans three states um, and a ton of institutions, but you see there um, out of Texas A&M who Drew's co-PIs are um, across those um, institutions and TAC is included, which is great to see. And there's a long uh, set of um, team members and this is um, in some ways um, um, imprinting the um, campus CI um, facilitation uh, model um, onto a large set of institutions across those uh, three states. And so this will be um, an exciting, another exciting project to follow um, as it uh, seeks to uh, broaden participation um, under this uh, award and get some uh, very effective uh, cyber training activities and engagements going with identified projects from the proposal um, across um, a large number of institutions across those three states. <clears throat> so finally, again, no date has been announced. Um, and um, yeah, I'm using careful wording there, but I, I think folks can expect to see the next solicitation out here uh, by the end of the calendar year. Uh, just be aware that we do tinker with this solicitation. It um, is unlike normal research programs that really usually don't change at all and have repeating dates. Uh, we, we like to try to uh, improve and move with the community year over year with the solicitation, so just keep that in mind. Um, I urge you to look into other programs. Um, cyber training is a great program to look into if you're not aware of it. And if, if 
What I've talked to you about, just for an example, as under the cyber team area, whether or not we're repeating that again, that's a great example of, of a larger anchor program um, covering learning workforce and development. And that's, got, by the way, got an open, solicit, uh, open due date, I think, of uh, January. Um, feel free to contact me anytime with questions. Um, if you've tried asking me about the program um, outside of the solicitation window, you know already that I usually don't have much to say. But when, a, when CC Star comes out, that 90 day window hits, um, I, I make every effort to be available to you. Um, and the best way to reach me for an initial contact is definitely on my email address. And um, that's it. Um, thanks for listening. And I think we've got time for questions, Jason. Yeah, we sure do. So thank you, Kevin. Um, so I, because there's a, such a large number of you today, I'd, I'd recommend that we don't try to do the unmute and ask your question thing. So if anybody does have a question, please type it into the, the chat window. Um, just a couple of things here. Carrie uh, did share the uh, link to the quilt um, quad charts and such, and also presentations from last week into the chat already. So thank you for that, Carrie. Um, I guess I'll start us off with, uh, with a question here. What do you think is the the biggest the biggest challenge that you want to try to address in the next round of funding? And uh, I'm asking you to show your cards a little bit here, so you know, of course, you can tell me not to, and you that you won't answer this question. But <laughs> but what are, what what are the ways that uh, that you're thinking that uh, we we need to come together as a community here and work together to sort of address some of the challenges in, in CI and scientific support? Yeah, thanks, Jason. That's a great, great opening question. Um, and, you know, I mean, officially, I, I'm not going to say that one area is more important than another or, or that, you know, this is the one we're keying on. But I think, um, I think one of the biggest challenges for the program is broadening participation um, and expanding our community to include these smaller and under-resourced institutions. And I think we're going to see with this set of Area 2 awards in 2019 and some of the previous years as well, I, I think we're going to see the community make um, uh, some real progress in, in broadening that participation. Um, so that excites me. I think it also presents a lot of challenges. So you know, you're the expert on this, Jason. I mean, uh, and we've talked about this before, you know, we take this very powerful and effective science DMZ model and, you know, maybe, um, maybe not every institution needs to be re-architected with all of those additional um, network elements and the complexity that comes with it, right? And maybe some of that functionality can be shared across uh, sets of institutions. So um, I think there's a broad challenge here in um, getting more institutions multi gigabit connected, um, especially in underserved communities. And I think that will be an ongoing um, opportunity for, for the program. Um, and I think area two will, will um, Probably be, if, as long as we repeat CC star, I see area two is probably being in the middle of this program uh, because of that. Um, but, you know, area one is also um, an outlet, right? So that first award I showed was from Claflin University and they, they proposed successfully as a single institution in the area one. Okay, thank you. Uh, no questions yet, so I'll send a, send another reminder out here. If people have any questions, type them in. I, I have, well, a, I guess, a, a fun question for you. Um, you've read a lot of these over the years. Has there been any, and it doesn't need to be the best or the most data intense, but do you have any sort of favorite science use cases <laughs> that people have profiled? <laughs> um. As, yeah, I, I really shouldn't choose favorites. I mean, I, I, can, I can choose from kind of two extremes, you know. I, 
I think the one, so there, there's one that, that was kind of an instant turn on for Vanderbilt that brought them up to 100 gigabits per second. And that was, um, this is from several years ago. It was based really largely from Paul Sheldon on Vanderbilt being a, a tier two CMS. Um, and so that's just kind of straightforward power example. But then, you know, I do kind of look back with fond memories and so, uh, I don't know if he's on, on the call or not, but um, Jorge, before he moved to South Carolina, gave this great talk in Albuquerque at the PI meeting as a new awardee. And he talked about, you know, from my takeaway, it wasn't so much about one specific um, science project. He really talked about how just putting the proposal together um, was really a discovery process for him and for um, his partners in campus IT leadership um, to discover and understand what was going on on campus and all these cool science projects um, that, and, and their aspirations moving forward, right? And so um, kind of ironically, I mean, I've said this a few times before, you know, uh, yeah, it's great to be able to fund um, campus network upgrades and all this equipment, but it may be the case that the biggest impact this program will have had whenever it ends is on the kind of the culture um, and the strategic partnerships um, at the campus level and how um, investments um, have been um, maybe investment priorities changed uh, to the better to support um, academic research on campus and, and doing that with the researchers as partners, not just users. Good answer. I like that. So we've had uh, three questions come in. I'll read them in the order in which I see them. Uh, my former boss, Eric Boyd, would like to know, other than attending the CC Star workshop, is there anything new you are looking for in terms of sharing of design patterns and lessons learned across the community? <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I mean, Eric, you probably know the, the outlets better than I do. I, I think they are numerous and you know, for your project, um, you can cross over into, I think, some of the cybersecurity venues, including maybe even a Usenix, right? But um, so TechX comes immediately to mind. Um, uh, I finally returned to a visit TechX last year and was really, really impressed um, with the level of talks and the dialogue, and I think that's coming up. So for maybe a new award, um, you know, maybe... Uh, Hard to talk to progress uh, in December in New Orleans, and I'm betting that I too has closed the uh, the window for um, for talks anyway. But maybe look look to that for for 2020. And of course, there's the the global uh, summit that they run um, in the spring. I think that's a little more diffuse, but they they have good technical talks there too. So you know, I think TechX. I'll point to. Um, um, as as a good one and then there's um, you know there's also SC and I'll put a plug in for um, Jason help me out on the acronym but there's this really cool networking workshop that people should know about especially if you're on this call you're probably uh, at least uh, somewhat connected to r &E networking and if you're going to SC you, you know come early and come to this workshop that they have um, on um, it's Sunday, isn't it, Jason? Yeah, it's the Indus workshop, and I believe it's the Sunday before the uh, exhibition opens. Yeah, and that's another that's another outlet to disseminate some of this. Um, there are, I mean, there's this brown bag series. Uh, I'm sure Jason would would welcome um, additional um, CC Star awardee talks um, going into 2020. Um, he can uh, refute that if he wants, but. Um, uh, and then um, there's also even um, JetNet, which can expose uh, your work to um, even beyond um, kind of the RENs that the RNA, the NRENs that call in. Um, there's some interesting um, agency representatives on JetNet. And so uh, they're just off the top of my head, there's some uh, dissemination venues, Eric. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one that came in was from uh, Druva. 
how do you see the CC Star community adopting to the use of streaming analytics in scientific computing? Jeez, Drew. Uh, thanks. Uh, streaming analytics in scientific computing. Okay, well, um, let's see. I think um, in, in some of these quadrants, we'll, we'll have um, NSF supporting that that journey. Um, I had to get off of um, a kickoff meeting on an exciting new project funded out of MRI R1 today called SAGE. And um, if you've heard of a project called Array of Things out of Chicago, this is kind of Array of Things on steroids. And so this is a new $10 million, well, $9 plus million award to deploy a common um, um, programmable um, sensor platform um, and expanding that beyond um, the array of things in Chicago to some additional environments, including Wi-Fi or an HP RIM and NEON. And so what's interesting about that award, why I bring it up, is that it will focus a lot on um, edge computing and infusing some machine learning inference um, capabilities um, at the sensor. And, and so, uh, you know, that's going to be uh, both, that's gonna, Sage is going to present um, an interesting combination, right, of a research platform on which you can investigate potentially some of these issues as a computer scientist and a real um, science platform um, for um, those communities that um, uh, lean on HP REN for environmental sensor um, data and uh, neon in the um, ecological um, environment. So that's just maybe one example, Drew. Okay, next one is from Carrie. What do you look for in a successful CI plan? <laughs> right, so Jason, it's correct that, that your faster data website still provides, because um, I've still got it in the solicitation, you're, you, you still provide examples of campus CI plans off of faster data, correct? Yep, we sure do. We curate it uh, every time you release a new one, and we're always accepting new submissions. So, Carrie, I think, you know, what you'll find in the solicitation is some guidance, and some of it is kind of specific. For example, you know, I think the solicitation asks you to address IPv6. I had kind of an interesting conversation with a great group from Merit on their wonderful IPv6 training program this morning that they presented to me is really awesome. But we don't require, so, you know, you read that wording really carefully, NSF is not requiring you to promise NSF that you're moving to V6 on a certain calendar date. We just want to make sure that you have that as some part of your strategic thinking in the future, that you're aware that really the world is mostly V6, right? And um, and that that should be some factor into your long range thinking on cyber infrastructure. Um, you know, there are some other kind of quasi surgical things I think that I'm to blame for in what we put in there for the guidance, but I purposefully leave it also somewhat loose and, um, and, and not close to providing um, a specific outline for the plan. And, um, and so I, I would suggest you um, take the time to look through some of the examples that the, some institutions have generously, you know, they've provided their own, uh, their own campus CI plan and look through those to give you some good ideas. Um, you know, from, from an evaluation standpoint, it is fair game in the review panel. So, you know, that's incentive to try to do a good job on that campus CI plan. And um, every year I have to, uh, I feel terrible about it. Every year I have to uh, return one or more proposals because they forgot to include a campus CI plan in the back as a supplemental document. So um, it's, it's worth taking seriously. And as I said before, I think just going through that um, with intent and, and effort is itself 
I think, uh, a valuable outcome of putting a proposal together for the program. Okay, uh, last two here. All right, Casey apologizes because his question is complicated. Let me see if I can distill it into its parts here. Basically, he wants to know, since letters of collaboration and support are now largely based off of a template, how is there a way that you can include quotes from the multiple researchers, and he's talking about this more from a cyber team or a regional perspective, uh, into the body so that they can uh, attest to the anticipated impact on their research? Uh, okay, so let me quickly reinterpret that question. I think KC is saying because of GPG guidance that he's interpreting as um, form letters for the letters of support, um, how do we convey, um, you know, directly um, um, input from um, the uh, scientists who will benefit most from the proposed work? And I think you kind of answered your own question, Casey. I mean, uh, yeah, I understand you can chew up the project description uh, pretty quickly. What is it, 13 pages, I lose 15 pages? But I would I would advise I I would advise you consider maybe carving out um, some space in the in the project description um, to convey um, some of those quotes. It might be worth it if if you think so. Okay, he says that that's good. <laughs> and the last one from Tori. Is there a minimum number of individual domains that need to be a part of a grant proposal to meet the definition of quote unquote campus wide? I don't, I don't know that it, it's a, there's a minimum number. Um, and I don't know that there's any right, right number. That's a good question because you know what? I think most, I'm, I'm betting at least half the people on this call have, are probably successful awardees and they've had to go through this in the program. Um, and it's, it's tough because you have to weigh um, that, that kind of thematic of showing a campus-wide impact while at the same time not going so diffuse that nothing comes across tangibly um, in just providing a laundry list, right, which is kind of the other extreme. Um, all I can say is that, you know, unfortunately, like every other program at NSF, this is a competition. and um, I, I think, you know, if you can, in a compelling way, describe, you know, more than one um, science driver in, in a convincing fashion um, that, you know, conveys that, hey, this, this is going to take these projects into, you know, really a new level of, of productivity and discovery. You know, that's kind of the sweet spot. And I don't know that there's, um, I don't believe that there's any specific number. I think you need to balance that with the quality um, of, of the description um, for those science drivers. Okay, and one last one, because that's good, because we're at the end of the time here. Uh, this is from Jorge. As a network instructor and educator, Fabric has a lot of potential for undergraduate and graduate students experimentation. Once this network is deployed, do you anticipate CC Star support connectivity <laughs> projects related to Fabric? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, so, for those of you who, who are hearing the word Fabric for the first time, I'll, I'll be real quick since we're at the end. It is a new $20 million award to Renzi and a number of great partners under Ilya Baldin. Uh, to, um, and ESNet is one of those great partners. And they're going to build a national scale network research experimental test bed. And um, it is uh, the program officer is Deep Medi, and he happens to be uh, my partner on this program in CC Star. So um, I, I think um, that I'll just leave my answer at that. Keep it vague. That's good. All right, well, that was all the questions that we had. Uh, thanks for everybody who uh, is still on. Um, Kevin is correct that next week's talk is going to be uh, someone who is funded out of this program. Uh, let me look at my notes really quick to make sure that I get it correct. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, next week it's uh, Clara Clara from uh, University of Illinois Urbana Champaign, and she's going to be talking about uh, campus specific cyber infrastructure challenges and solutions for scientific instruments and their workflows and their lab environments. And there is an abstract that I will send around for that uh, later on. So thanks again, everybody. Kevin, just send me your slides. I'll make sure they get posted and hope everybody has a good weekend. Bye-bye.